There is a required practical about the density of materials and there's two methods, one for the regular shapes. If you have a regular shape then you can measure the length, the width and the height with a ruler and you can calculate the volume using the equation volume equals length times width times height. Remember whenever you're describing a method to state what you're measuring, what you're going to measure it with and what you're going to use it for. And then you measure the mass with a balance. See what I mean? You're measuring the mass with a balance and you calculate the density using the equation density is mass over volume. Whenever you're asked questions about this practical, pay close attention to the units being used. Convert as early as possible, and I suggest before you even calculate the volume. Because let's look at these two cubes here. They are exactly the same cube, but the units are different. So that means that the value, the number that you're going to get out for the density will be different, even though the densities are exactly the same. Just because the units are different, the actual number is going to be different. So let's work these two calculations through. For the first one, four centimeters times four centimeters times four centimeters gives us 64 centimeters cubed. And then density is mass divided by volume, 16 grams divided by 64 centimeters cubed gives you 0.25 grams per centimeter cubed. Same cube though, but with units in meters and kilograms. 0.04 times 0.04 times 0.04, that's the same volume, but you end up with 0.000064 meters cubed. And then density is mass over volume, gives you that 0.016 kilograms, that's the same 16 grams, but in a different unit, over 0.000064 gives you 250 kilograms per meter cubed. So that is the same density, but expressed in a different unit. Now, can you see how if you hadn't converted from centimeters into meters before you'd done that calculation, you could very easily have made a mistake converting that volume. It was easier to convert centimeters into meters than it is to convert centimeters cubed into meters cubed. The conversion factor is actually a million if you are converting centimeters cubed into meters cubed rather than a hundred. And lots of students make that mistake, so don't be that one. A common evaluative point in this practical is the resolution of the instrument. So you're using a ruler and the resolution of a ruler is one millimeter. That's what we mean by the resolution of the instrument. It's the smallest division that can be measured by the ruler. The word resolution means the smallest scale division that can be measured by that instrument. So you could and you probably would use a ruler to measure the length, width and height. Now the resolution of a ruler is one millimeter. If you needed to go to a higher resolution than that, if you wanted to be more accurate, because let's say your cube was only a couple of centimeters, then you perhaps want to use something called a vernier caliper or even a micrometer. And they have higher resolutions and that can increase your accuracy. So if you want to measure very small lengths, widths and height, try using a vernier caliper or a micrometer. Vernier calipers measure to 0.1 millimeter and micrometers measure to 0.01 millimeter. That is a higher resolution. Similarly, they may discuss the resolution of the mass balance. Most mass balances can measure to 0.01 grams, but perhaps the mass balance you've been given has a lower resolution than that. That could be one evaluative point you could make. If you were dealing with a cube of very small mass, you might want a higher resolution, but if you're dealing with a very large cube of a, a mass around a kilogram, perhaps you don't need to measure to 0.01 grams. That's all about the regular shape method. There is another method to this practical though for an irregular shape, something that isn't cubic or cuboid or spherical. And what we'd actually use is Archimedes' discovery, Archimedes' principle we call it. Essentially Archimedes' principle states that an object displaces the same volume of fluid as its own volume. And this was used by Archimedes to measure the volume of an irregular shape, a crown. We won't get into the story right now, but I do have a video where I discuss Archimedes' story. And you can use a displacement can or you can just use a measuring cylinder to measure the displacement by an irregular shape. So if you have a measuring cylinder with some liquid in it and you place the shape in, then the volume will appear to increase on the measuring cylinder. And the difference between those will be the volume of the irregular shape. That's not very hard to understand, but make sure you can explain that in really clear and accurate terms. Then again, to continue with this method, measure the mass with a balance and then calculate the density using density is mass divided by volume. Here's some example results. 
Now remember though that with the measuring cylinders the resolution actually differs depending on what it can hold and what size it is. So if you use a very large measuring cylinder for a very large object then you're going to find it difficult to get a high resolution because perhaps it only measures to the nearest 10 centimeters cubed or maybe even the nearest 100 centimeters cubed and that won't give you a very accurate result because of that resolution. So it may be better to use a displacement can and then measure that volume with a higher resolution measuring cylinder. But then you've got the issue of trying to collect all the water accurately and not leaving any water in the can or in the measuring cylinder itself. Let's just quickly work out these two densities here. So in this table, the units are in the headings. So the mass is in kilograms, 3,200 divided by four meters cubed. The density of steel is 8,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And for the polyethene, 27,000 divided by 30 gives you 900 kilograms per meter cubed. That's the typical type of table that you might use in this practical.